Hi and welcome to BFG Photography. In this video I'll show you how to delete a person or object from a photo. There are various situations you can come across. You might have one person or several people in the photo, for example, and depending upon the situation some Photoshop tools work better than others. I'll talk about various scenarios in which tool might work best, and I'll also compare the differences and similarities among the various tools. Now we're going to start with the basics for selecting the person. We'll start with the lasso tool. We'll move on to select subject. And finally, we'll talk about the object selection tool, which gives you a little more flexibility. For deleting the person, we'll talk about content aware fill and delete and fill selection. And lastly, we'll even touch upon the old standby the clone tool. But in this video, it'll be used mostly for cleanup work. And by the way, if you'd like a DaVinci Resolve plugin that creates fully customizable animated bullet lists just like this one, be sure and check out the link to William Justice's YouTube channel in the description below. And with that, let's get started. Let's start with this file. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the file called Woman on Rocky Sea Beach from the link in the description below. This is one of the simpler situations. If you have a single subject like this and lots of room around the subject, the easiest thing to do is to click the lasso tool and just draw a loose selection around the subject like this. Now right click and select delete and fill selection from the drop down. There are no options in this particular tool. So you kind of get what you get. And it looks like it's a little bit rough in this area here. And there's also water shooting up into the sky. So let's see if we have any better luck by using Content Aware Fill. Let's back up to the lasso. Let's right click, select Content Aware Fill. Now in this option, we do have some control over what gets used to create the fill area. I'm going to press Control plus over here and zoom in a little bit on this area. I can see a similar problem to what we had with Delete and Fill Selection. Now over on this side, if I press Control 0 I can see the entire area that is being used to create the selection. Anything highlighted in green is being used to create the fill area. And it looks like this area here is coming from down here. So I'm going to delete that from the fill area and see if that helps. I think I need to delete a little more. And that actually looks pretty good. So I'll click OK. And then Control D to delete the selection. And it looks like I don't have too much cleanup work to do in this situation. Now let's try select subject instead of using the lasso tool. We'll go back to the beginning. I will select select subject from the drop down. Wait a few seconds. And there's my selection. Now if I right click and do content aware fill if I delete the same area roughly as I did last time, I get a similar result, except I'm going to hit Control D to delete the selection and Control Alt Zero to zoom in. And you can see that using Content Aware Fill leaves behind an outline of the subject when you have a very close selection. We don't have that issue when we use Delete and Fill Selection. I'll hit Control Z, back up a bit. Now I'll right click and select Delete and Fill Selection. Wait a moment and you can see it does not leave the outline. However, the downside is you don't have control over the area that gets used to create the fill, so the fill in this particular case is not as good. Now let's see if we can improve the results of the Content Aware Fill. I'll back this out a little bit. I'm going to do Select, Modify, Expand. And you can enter 10 to 20 pixels here depending upon the size of your photo. 
If I enter 15 pixels and zoom in, you can see there's a little bit of a buffer now between the selection and the actual subject that I'm trying to delete. The only place that doesn't happen is up here where there's a few strands of hair that go outside the selection. To include those, I'll click the lasso tool, hold down the shift key, and draw a rough selection to include all those loose strands of hair. Hit Control Zero to zoom back out. Right click, Content Aware Fill. Let's go back in and delete that same area we've been deleting. And that looks pretty good. I'll hit Control D. And you could do a little bit of cleanup with the clone tool, but that's a very good start on deleting the person from this photo. For this example, the file is called Team of Young People, in case you'd like to download it from the link in the description and follow along. And before we start, let's click on Background, click Control J, and create a background copy, which I will rename to Background Copy. Uh, that way we preserve the original photo in the background. Now click on the Object Selection tool. Notice that if I hover in the sky, it will automatically highlight the sky. If I hover on the water, it'll highlight the water. It highlights the background. And as I hover over each person, it will highlight each person in the photo, making it easy to select one particular person. Let's try deleting this person from this photo. I'm going to left click the mouse. I will go over here and select the lasso tool. Zoom in and make any corrections that might be needed to the selection. Looking at the top here, there are some things we could do to improve the selection in the uh, head area. But recall from our last exercises that when you have a selection that is right on top of the object or person you're trying to delete, it could cause some problems. So let's try to add a little buffer area up there. I'll hold the shift key while expanding this selection just a little bit. Okay, that looks like it should work. Let's right click and do delete and fill selection. And through the miracle of Photoshop, we end up with a jumbled mess. That didn't work too well, so let's click Control Z and go back and try Content Aware Fill, where we have a little more control over what gets used to create the fill. Notice that the fill area here is also kind of a jumbled mess. So let's move to the left, click Control Zero. And because we have body parts in here that we don't want, let's go over here and delete anything that is a body. That's done a little better job, so let's click OK. I'll hit Control D. Now, those of you who are astute viewers will notice there are a couple of people who are missing arms. Yes, so what do we do about that? Well, maybe it would work if I could take the guy in the white shirt and move him over next to the person in the black top. Before we do that, let's take the top two layers and merge those together. Let's go over to the Object Selection tool again. Hover over the person with the white shirt. Select the Lasso tool. And zoom in and make any corrections we might need to make. Okay, that should do it for now. Once we have the person or object selected, we click Control J, and that puts the person on a separate layer. You can see if I hide the other layers, this person is on a separate layer. I'm gonna rename that layer White Shirt. Control click on the image to reselect White Shirt and hide that layer. Now I'm going to go to the background copy. What I'd like to do is delete the person from the background copy layer. We learned that Select, Modify, Expand 
improves the results. I'll do that. I'll right click and select Delete and Fill Selection. And that does a pretty good job. So now let's unhide the white shirt. Click V on the keyboard or click the Move tool. Click anywhere on white shirt and drag to the left. I can move this person over like so. Now that doesn't look too bad, except I still am missing part of an arm here. So let's zoom in. Click the S for the clone stamp tool. Going to click up here and create a little bit more arm out here. Now that doesn't look 100% correct. What I can do is change the opacity down a little bit so I can see that there is a little bit of black top behind the white shirt. I'm going to click the mask button. Click B for brush. Make sure black is the foreground color. I'm going to click and drag and reveal the black that was behind. Now I'll change the opacity back to 100%. And that looks a little better. What I can do is clean up the background here a little bit. Click the S tool for the clone stamp. And maybe hide some of these ripples and hide some of those imperfections. Okay, now one more thing we could do. Notice in the original picture there was a hand. Mr. Whiteshirt had his hand on the person next to him. What I'd like to do is take this hand and move it to her shoulder so it looks like Mr. Whiteshirt has his hand on her shoulder. So let's zoom in to select the hand. I'll click on the Object Selection tool again. Now, notice that I can select the individual, the water, but not the hand. Make sure you have Lasso selected in the mode and click and drag a selection just to the outside of the hand and the hand will be selected. I'll hit Control C to copy the hand. I want the hand to be on the top layer, so I'll select the white shirt layer and click Control V to paste the hand. Now I'll click V on the keyboard to get the Move tool and move the hand over here and I will also rename the layer to Hand. Now the hand doesn't look exactly right. It's not at the right angle, no problem. Click Control T and you'll get this bounding box and make sure you're outside the bounding box and the cursor looks like the curved arrow. Click and drag. You can change the angle of the hand. Either double click inside the box or click the check mark. We have some cleanup to do on the hand. I'm going to click Control plus and zoom in to 200%. If I click S on the keyboard for the clone stamp, the left bracket to make it a little smaller, I'm going to Alt click the finger and copy. I don't want this part of the hand selection showing up, so what I'm going to do is create a Mask, make sure black is the foreground color. B for brush. And make the size about, oh, nine pixels or so. And I'll go down and hide that portion of the hand. Now I still need to fill in the little finger. Clicking S for the clone stamp. Left bracket to make the brush a bit smaller. Make sure you're on the image portion of the layer. Alt click and
And that looks a little better. Without the hand? With the hand. Now let's go up here, right click on the current snapshot, and let's call this only four left. Go up to the top. There's the team of five we started with, and there's the four we ended with. Well, we covered a lot of ground there, so how about a quick recap? Not that kind of recap. A recap of the techniques we discussed. First, always work on a copy of the layer in order to preserve the original image. When deleting an isolated person or object with similar background area all the way around it, you can usually do a loose selection with the lasso tool. If you use Select Subject or the Object Selection tool and then use Content Aware Fill, you may end up with an outline of the subject that would need to be cleaned up. If instead you use Delete and Fill Selection, you will typically not end up with the outline of the subject. However, with Delete and Fill Selection, you do not have control over the area used to create the fill area. So if you need to make adjustments to the fill area being used, then you may be better off using Content Aware Fill, which gives you that control. Just add a little buffer to the selection, if possible, to avoid leaving an outline behind. When deleting one person from a group, use the Object Selection tool to select the person to be deleted. Look for ways to make the result look more believable, such as moving remaining people together, overlapping them if possible, using the clone tool to replace or hide any missing body parts, and also try moving a hand or arm to a natural looking position. Thanks for watching BFG Photography. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And lastly, I'm going to make one more person disappear. I'll see you in the next video.